Roblox has just released an update which allows developers to ban players from their game. Now, you might be thinking, well, wasn't this already possible? I've been banned in games before. And yes, it kind of has been possible for developers to implement their own banning system, but Roblox has released a brand new ban feature which does a couple of cool things, including even banning alternate accounts of that player. So, there's pretty much four main cool features that come with this system. The first one, as we already said, is new real-time alternate account detection. When you ban a user, suspected alt accounts are also banned in real time. Now, one caveat to this is that we're not actually able to determine or able to see what accounts are related to each other and what are alternatives of each other. That information is private and Roblox does not give us that information, but they will ban alternative accounts of that single account. They just won't give us any way to link that back to any of the accounts though. The next thing is moderation history overview. You can see your moderation history for any user you ban from the experience. Now, what they're referring to with that feature is a brand new method that they added to the player service, which is called Get Ban History Async. And what that gives to us is basically an array of ban history pages. So we're able to view the display reason, the private reason, which are essentially strings that we actually put into this user when we banned them originally. We can also get the start time that the ban was applied at, the duration for how long it was. It'll tell us if it was a ban or an unban, and then it'll give us the place ID where the ban or unban was updated at. So it's cool to be able to track a player's history for every time that they've been banned or unbanned. Maybe you only want to give players one chance, maybe you want to give players three chances. Being able to view their moderation history makes it very easy to do that. The next cool feature is the customizable bans. We're able to determine the reason and the duration of the ban as long as it follows Roblox's community standards and terms of service. So Roblox has essentially added a brand new method to the player service, which is called ban async. Now, what we need to actually pass to this function is a dictionary with a couple of different key value pairs. The key value pairs that we have to pass through to this dictionary are user IDs, which is actually an array of numbers and those numbers would be user IDs of the players that we want to ban. Then we have apply to universe, which would ban the player from all universes in your project. Then we have the duration for the amount of seconds that we would like to ban the player for. If we want to make that ban permanent though, we actually set the duration to negative one. Then we have the display reason, which is a message that will be displayed to the users when they attempt to join our game. Then we have the private reason, which is an internal message that we can see in the user's ban history, but that user will not actually be able to see that information. And the last key value pair that we can pass through is exclude alt accounts, which is a boolean. And if we set this to false, then the player's alt accounts will not be banned from our game. And then the last bullet point is configure via engine or open cloud API. So they've made the functionality available via the engine, which is the API, something that we've already taken a look at. And then they've also added to the open cloud APIs as well, which allows you to ban or unban people from your game without actually even doing it in Roblox at all. But we're not going to be covering any of that in this episode. Instead, we're going to be working with the engine to show you how you can ban and unban players from directly inside of Roblox Studio. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to hop directly into Roblox Studio, and I'm going to teach you how we can use the brand new ban API. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to actually do is make sure that you've published this project so that you're able to test out the ban system. So when you're inside of Roblox Studio in a brand new base plate, you're going to go to the home tab, you'll go to game settings, and then you'll be able to actually publish your game to Roblox. I've already published my game, so that's why my game settings looks like this, but go ahead, pause the video, publish your game, and then come back once you have published your game. Now that we've published the game, we're going to want to be able to join the game inside of the Roblox player, and in my opinion, the easiest way of doing this is actually clicking this little share button at the top right-hand corner of the screen, and that might not give you a link to your game right now, but that should actually take you to a screen which will allow you to configure the privacy of your game, and then you could go ahead and set that to everyone or friends. Then, once you click the share button again, it should actually give you that link. Alternatively, if you have another method for accessing your game, you can do it that way. But the reason that we're going to want to be able to join the game in the official Roblox player is because the ban API is not actually used inside of Studio. It'll actually be entirely ignored. The only way for the ban API to be used is actually inside of the Roblox player in the actual game. Cool. So now that we've published our game and now that we have a link for it to be able to easily test it out, the next thing that we're going to do is actually begin working with this API. Now, the ban API can only be used on the server side. It's not able to be used on the client side in any way. So what we're going to do is we're going to go inside of the server script service and then we're going to go ahead and create a brand new script. Now, if you want to, you can rename the script, but this is the only script that we're going to be creating during this episode, so I don't really care to rename it. Now, I bet while watching throughout this video, you probably assume that Roblox actually added in a brand new service, which is probably called the ban service or something similar. And while that was actually an assumption that I had originally, no, Roblox did not create a brand new service. Instead, what they did is they actually added some more functionality and actually all the ban functionality to the player's service. So inside of the script, that's the first thing we're going to want to do is create a variable for the player service. So we'll go ahead and say local players equals game colon get service players just like that. Now the first part of the ban API that we're going to be working with is actually for banning a player. In order to ban a player from our game, Roblox has added a method to the player service which is called ban 
and a sink. And like I showed you earlier, we need to pass through a table, more specifically a dictionary to this function, which is sort of the band config, where we provide all the information about the specific band. Now, we're not gonna write this anywhere inside of our script. Instead, what we'll do is actually create a function for sort of handling this entire thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create a brand new local function, which is gonna be called band player, and it's going to have a single parameter. This single parameter is not going to be a player. Instead, it's gonna be called user ID, which is actually going to be a number. So yeah, every single time we call this function, instead of passing through the player, we're instead going to pass through their user ID to this function, if we wanna ban them, of course. Now inside of this function, what we wanna do is create a variable for the ban config that we're creating. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and create a variable simply called config, and now I'm gonna specify the type of this by using a colon, and then we'll go ahead and use the ban config type. Now that we specify the type of this, let's go ahead and set it equal to a table. And now we'll start adding all the key value pairs to this table, or at least the ones that we want to modify. So first we'll go ahead and add in the user IDs. Again, the user IDs is an array of numbers, and those numbers are user IDs of the players that you'd like to ban. Now, we only want to ban one player, so I'm going to create a table, and then I'll go ahead and add the user ID inside of that table directly like that. Then I'll use a comma, because now we want to add in another key value pair. The next key value pair that we want to add in is duration, which is how many seconds we would like the ban to last for. So, of course, this would be a number. If we put 10 here, then that means that we would be banning the player for 10 seconds. Or if we put 100, that would be 100 seconds, and 1,000 would be 1,000 seconds. But if you put negative one, that will actually permanently ban the player from the game. And the only way for them to be unbanned is if we use the unban method and then pass through their user ID, of course. Instead of banning the player permanently, I'm going to go ahead and just ban the player for 60 seconds, which would be an entire minute. Then after the duration key value pair, we're going to go ahead and add in the display reason, which is a string. And this string will be displayed to the player when they try to join our game after they've been banned. So the message that I'm going to display to the player is, you have violated the rules of our game, exclamation mark. But of course, you can use whatever message that you'd like to here, as long as it falls within Roblox's terms of service. Now, the next key value pair that we can add to here is actually called private reason. And this is similar to the display reason, but this private reason is actually only for us to know about. The player will never have access to the private reason, and mostly the private reason is useful because we can actually view it in their moderation history. So we can actually write a very specific reason here for why we ban the player, such as if we ban them for aimbot, maybe we don't want the player to know what reason we actually ban them for, because maybe they were using multiple hacks and we don't want them to actually realize that, oh, they were caught for this specific hack. But with the private reason, they won't have access to this information, so we can safely use it here if we wanted to. So what I'm going to pass through on the string is they used aimbot on, and then I'll just go ahead and pass through just some random date. If your game uses a ticket system where players can report other players and maybe there's an ID for that ticket, that could be useful to include inside of here as well. I just kind of wanted to give you an example of one practical private reason. Now, there's a couple of other key value pairs that we can add to this, which we talked about originally, such as apply to universe, which I haven't added it to this table because we're not going to change the value from what it is from default, which is true. And then we also have exclude alt accounts, which by default is set to false. And I wouldn't change this to true because I would want the player and all of their alt accounts to be banned from my game instead of just one of their accounts. So yeah, I'm not going to add those key value pairs here because they're not going to change, but I did want to quickly go over them. Now that we've created the config table, what we can then do is actually call and use the ban method. Now, the ban method actually invokes an HTTP call on Roblox's backend services, and essentially those methods can fail. So because they can fail, you can think of failing as sort of erroring out. Like if you wrote code and messed up somewhere in that code and it said attempted to index with nil, that's just one very common error, for example, that would essentially stop your function wherever that error occurs. At. And that's essentially what this would do as well. And Roblox is letting us know this so that we're actually able to kind of circumvent that error. So what we're going to do is actually use a pcall. Now, in order to use this pcall, what we first want to do is create two variables. The first variable is going to be called success. Then we're going to use a comma and create a second variable on the same line, which is going to be called error. Now, what these are going to be equal to is a pcall, which inside of here, we'll go ahead and create an anonymous function. Then what we're going to do is say return and then we'll return the result of the player service, and then we'll go ahead and use the ban async method and pass through the config variable that we've just created. So the reason that we're wrapping this inside of a pcall is because if this method actually errors out, the pcall can handle that error, and it would prevent this function from stopping directly where that error happens at. The pcall will essentially absorb that error, and then we have two variables right here, which we can use to determine if that function was successful or if there is an error using it. So it's very, very useful to wrap that inside of a pcall. Cool, so now that we've created that function, we're just going to go ahead and quickly test it out by using it. To use this function, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use the player service and listen to the player added event. 
anytime a player is added, so let's go ahead and create an anonymous function, and then we'll go ahead and get the player from that event. So whenever a player is added to our game, what we're going to do is just simply ban that player, just to test us out. So we'll just go ahead and say ban player, we'll pass through the player.user ID, which of course is the player's user ID. And now what we're going to do is actually test this out inside of a Roblox game. And remember how I said, the ban API is not usable inside of Roblox Studio. It only works inside of an actual Roblox game. So what we need to do is we need to go to the file button. We can then click on publish to Roblox, which should publish the changes directly to the game, which is on the Roblox website. Then we'll go ahead and try to join the game. And once we join the game, we can actually see a message which says you were kicked from this experience. You have violated the rules of our game. And of course that happened because once I joined the game, I was automatically banned. Now, when I try to join the game once again, I'm not even able to actually join the game. Instead, I met with a join error message, which says you were banned from this experience by the creator for one minute. Here's a message from the creator and our message is you have violated the rules of our game and then Roblox presents an error code to the player as well. So now because our ban duration is only 60 seconds this ban will expire after 60 seconds but we still actually need to stop using the ban player method otherwise of course we're going to ban ourselves once again. So if you want to you can comment this out publish the changes to Roblox once again then wait for your ban to have expired join the game and you should see that you've now been unbanned and we can see that right here as I've already joined the game. Now that we've been able to take a look at how we're able to ban players, let's also take a look at how we're able to unban players as well. Now, unbanning players is very similar to how we're actually able to ban them. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create another function, which we're going to use for unbanning players. So we'll go ahead and call this function unban player, which again is going to have a single parameter called user ID. And that's of course going to be a number. Now, whenever we want to unban a player, we have to create a similar config variable, similar to how we created one for when we wanted to ban a player. So let's go ahead and create a variable called config, and we'll specify the type of this to be the unban config type which of course is going to be equal to a table. Now, inside of this table, we're going to want to include a couple of different key value pairs. And a lot of these key value pairs are pretty similar to the ones in our band config type as well. So the first one that we're going to want to include is the user IDs, which of course is going to be equal to a table. And inside of this table is where we're going to insert all of the user IDs that we would like to unban. So of course, I'm just going to go ahead and pass through the user ID into that table, just like that. Now, the only other key value pair that we can actually add inside of this table is called apply to universe, which like we talked about earlier would of course unban all the players from every universe in our game. Now, while Roblox has marked this key value pair on the website as optional, meaning we shouldn't have to include that inside of this table, when I was working with this API a couple of hours ago, it actually did require me to include this key value pair, otherwise it would result in an error. So when you're seeing this, you may not need to include apply to universe if you're not changing it from the default value, which is true. But if you are still experiencing that error, then you probably will have to include it. So I'm just going to go ahead and include it by setting it to true, which again is the default value. Now that we've created the config table, we can go ahead and actually use all that information to go ahead and unban the player. When we want to unban a player though, we want to do the exact same thing that we did for when we banned them, which is wrap the method inside of a p call because they essentially work in the same way. So let's go ahead and create our success and error variables. We'll set that equal to a p call and create an anonymous function inside of here. Now our anonymous function does not have any parameters, so we'll go ahead and remove them. And now inside of this p call, we're going to go ahead and return the player service. And then we'll go ahead and use the unban async method passing through the config. Now there's not a very easy or straightforward method to test the unban feature out simply because what we already did when we were testing the ban feature out is we banned our account from our game. Now the issue is though, is that if we wanted to unban our account by using the unban function, we would need this function to actually run in order to unban our account. Of course, we would call this function and pass through our user ID to unban ourselves. But the the issue is, is that if we try to join our game, which we have been banned from, nothing will actually happen. None of the server scripts will run or anything like that because Roblox is not going to create a server when a banned player is attempting to join the game. It'll actually completely cancel everything out and almost sort of prevent the player from trying to join at all. So when I was testing this originally, what I would do is I would ban my main account and I would pass through the exclude alt accounts and set that to true because I would want to exclude my alternate accounts from being banned from the game as well. So my main account would be banned. Then what I would do is call the unban player function with my user ID, which we'll just say is like 999, for example. Then I would publish the changes inside of the script to Roblox. Then I would swap to my alt account, join my game on my alt account, which would allow this game to load up, this script to run, this function to be called, and that would effectively unban my primary account. 
So then I could log back into my main account and join the game and see that I have actually been unbanned, which we could also do that here. But at the same time, there's not really a point to, in my opinion, the functions that we wrote here are extremely simple. And we can pretty much guarantee that as long as you're just calling these methods, they will work. And as long as you're just passing through the user IDs, that will work as well. So yeah, that's why I'm not exactly going to go through that testing right here. One little addition that would be nice is if Roblox made it a little bit easier for us to manage bands, maybe inside of Roblox Studio, or maybe made it possible at all. But hey, I shouldn't be asking for too much. I am at least happy that we did get an actual ban system implemented into Roblox. And the coolest part is that it also bans the player's alt accounts as well, which is super, super helpful. Now I'm going to go ahead and undo all of the code that I kind of just added in. That was, I would say kind of random. This is the actual code that I would use when I'm writing my band system. But of course you can feel free to modify this to look however you want to, if you want want to include different config options or do anything like that, feel free to do that. But anyways, with that all being said, let me know in the comment section down below how you feel about the band system. Are you excited? I think this is a gigantic update from Roblox that is super impactful and will really help out a lot of games which are competitive focused since it makes banning alternate accounts actually possible. So it really helps keep the competitive integrity of a lot of different games. But like I said, let me know what you think about it down below in the comment section. And if this video did help you out or you did enjoy it, make sure you smash the like button, hit the subscribe button and turn this post notifications on if you want to get notified with more Roblox development content. Anyways, with all that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video and I hope that you guys have a great day.